Hello, welcome to this edition of Artists on Artists. It's the Glass Art Podcast where we have one-on-one conversations with artists around the state. I'm your host, Christopher Blay, news editor at glassstar.com. Today's guest is Robert L. Hodge. We're speaking with Robert at the Cactus Records here in Houston, Texas, on the occasion of the release of his brand new album, Friendly Fire. So the album is uh, an experimental album that was made around 2017, kind of worked into 2018 with this exhibition uh, that we did in collaboration with the Station Museum. So I happen to be one of the artists that were involved with this kind of split demographically, like these kind of younger artists with these um, these elder artists that we all respected here in Houston, uh, like Noah Emerson, um, uh, Forrest Prince, um, Jesse Lott, and then it's like uh, myself, Love You Olivia, um, uh, Gary Martinez, uh, uh, Kaneen Smith, uh, Regina Agu. Um, I know I'm missing somebody, but it was like that kind of, you know, it was a really, it was a really great show. You know, Friendly Fire is an open turn, a, a military turn, and uh, I thought about police brutality against civilians. And how it, how it was like it's all you know this tactical gear they wear they got these Batman style trucks and vests and helmets and it's a lot of violence especially against black bodies and so um, this record at the time was very very important and it's, it's the unfortunate part of this album is still relevant um, because it's like when we was ready to drop it all this stuff just, all it does kick back up again you know right um, after George Floyd and so it just like it, it made the album very very on time and relevant and um, so it was here. It feels like it was made last week, and he said, like, it feels like it's, you just made this, but, um, yes, yeah, it's for something to throw on late night to inspire you. You're working on some art, or you're writing a paper, or you're in your court. Whatever you're doing, I think it can, it has the ability to, to let you kind of tune in and then tune out when you want to. Um, but I, I made sure some grooves on there. I made sure you got some some gems for for information. I made sure some soundscapes. So I think, and I try to give a little something to everybody, you know, there's some yeah. Afro beat on here. Um, you know, it's blues, it's hip hop. Um, I, I, I felt the spirit of Phelan, man. I just felt like it was a good protest song. I see myself walking down downtown or in New Orleans, um, <laughs> protesting and doing my, you know, it gives you that kind of vibe, you know. Yeah. You can I still feel. protest and still be jamming at the same time, you know. I think it's important to have some good music. So, you know, I didn't want it too serious. I wanted to have some. It is music. It's like you gotta remember even with art, it's still an aesthetic. You know, you might be saying something in your painting, but I still think it should be beautiful. So same thing with music. You know, you know it's protest music. You know, we want to have a good time. We want some good energy. So the song is definitely yeah. that. So um, did it? Were there things that you wanted to appear on the album that you edited out, or is it? essentially waiting for moments and creating things and then putting those things in the album. Yeah, it's, it was taking moments I knew that were important, like with the interviews and then throwing in stuff I, th- I thought could make the album really interesting and make it feel like, you know, a kind of a roller coaster ride, you know, coming in, it's, it's out the climax of a movie and coming out. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I thought about, man, I need some Afro beat, I need some blues. I know I, I know it's gonna have hip hop. Um, I probably had a little bit more jazz on there. I probably did something. I just don't, that's the only thing I'm, I feel like I'm missing. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty um, excited about the record because I heard it again last week as a fan. Because it's been so much time now I can listen to it with different ears. And right. How do you listen? How do you listen to the album? Like your first listen through, did you just like go side A, side B, side C, side D? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, is and, that and how? Then, and, thinking, and then thinking like, how does this relate overall? Is it cohesive? Does it make sense as a listener? Like you know, why is it sound here? What does this mean? How does it relate? And dealing with the times we're in now, I think it takes you right there. Like just seeing right here, this is the riot scene. This is Ayanna McLeod. So it's the build up. Yeah. 
and it slowly builds up into a ride. So these little sounds kind of pop in, and then it, it just like goes up, and then boom, it's, you hear bottles, you hear screaming, you hear gunshots, and so. Um, so I know that you've been waiting um, and patiently creating this album, making it, trying to make it happen. Uh, like, can you imagine this album being released at any other time than now? Like, no, I think it's perfect right now. And, and the pandemic, that's something that's, that's really unfortunate and critical like, to, to what's happening now. It makes people, the good side, it makes people stop and listen to even absorb a vinyl and be able to and engage with flipping it over and maybe getting a record player. Like those things that, that wouldn't happen without the pandemic. I, I think it's a, it's a important time when people are actually in their homes a lot. They can sit down, they can really listen to what's happening. I'm about to put on the soundscape by Kaneen Smith. It's called Trust Me. And it was a uh, soundscape from the exhibition. It was a side, she had this drapery, kind of sculptural element in the exhibition, and this was the plain side of it, so. And I think people want somebody who they know they can trust, mm -hmm. who has been consistent on issues regarding the well-being of working families, and I think I'm that candidate. Uh, being blackish only makes you popular for so long. Trust me. They're telling us to just forget about it. Trust the powers that be that got us into this mess. People know about this violence against us, man, but now you can absorb it because you're at home and you're seeing the news all day and now you, you're kind of taking it in differently because now you're forced to be still. And so, yeah. you know, with stillness comes listening. So, um, yeah, it's a good time. It's a perfect time, actually. So. Like, I mean, do you feel you've said um, most of the things you want to say on this album? Yeah. No, I think, I think this is the finalization of it. I think it's a moment in time that can't be brought back. Like, Forrest is not here anymore, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and I, didn't, I didn't know how long Jesse would be here. I mean, I love Jesse a lot so much, man. I, I shot this video first just because when Forrest passed, all this happening just kind of kind of terrified me that, you know, we take him, we can't take each other for granted. Even besides the COVID, like, we just used to saying, I see that person next week, and it don't always get to happen. So I think because of that, it, it can't, I can't go backwards. So um, Lance was bringing up the art guys, and, um, they're not, they don't exactly relate to this project, but they relate to how um, they were mentors and doing this thing in art that we admired, man, because they just got us outside the box of just creating physical things, but um, performance art. And yeah. so like we highlighted them, me and Philip Powell at Art League, but same thing, Michael's not here anymore. You know, Michael was always that person I could call with that real calm, low, smoothing voice. And it, it felt like whatever he said would calm you down because he always said the right things. And so, but now he's not here, so you know, um, it's another example of how, uh, you know, I, I honor my all my comrades and I have I have elders who I look up to and I get information from. That's important. I have young artists that, that feed energy and I can give things back. So I think we have a cycle of giving, but the ultimate point is I want to honor everybody and respect their time while they're here because I just don't know. I was getting out of the car, coming back home, and this is why I have to Stop approaching me, I hadn't broken any law. And uh, then, at this point, Officer Drupal his gun. When he drew his gun, I drew mine. And I was coming from the shoulder, and he was coming from the side, so I beat him till he dropped. 